What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be talking about one of the most important tools you or any other techie could have in their arsenal, and that's a USB drive with Ventoy on it. If you're anything like me, you've probably burned Windows 10, 11, Linux, rescue drives, and things like that thousands of times to USBs, downloading individual copies of Rufus or Belena Etcher, and it takes a heck of a long time. What if you could just copy ISOs to a USB, boot off of them, install Windows, rescue files, etc., all without having to burn anything? Obviously, you can't just copy ISOs to a USB drive, you need something to boot off of first and then choose which ISO you want to use. That software is called Ventoy. In the description down below, you'll find a link to Ventoy. All you need to do when you get to this page is click Downloads at the very top, then simply choose Windows. That's it. You can also do this on a Linux system by simply choosing Linux. The steps are pretty similar once you have the program open. Anyways, to download it, simply click the green button to get the latest version. Then we'll open the zip and extract it. So I'll drag this folder, say, onto my desktop. It's only temporary. We'll close the zip, possibly delete it, and open up the folder that we just extracted, Ventoy, followed by the version number. In here, we'll have a bunch of different files. The only one we're interested in right now is Ventoy to disk. Simply open up this program. Once once you've inserted your USB flash drive. Obviously, you'll want to make sure it's quite a few gigs, especially if you're going to be putting multiple ISOs on here, such as Windows 10, 11, Linux, and a couple of rescue things like Hirons or something like that. Anyways, with a suitable sized USB plugged in, I'll open up Ventoy to disk, and I've got an 8 gig USB here that should just be detected and should pop up as the only item here. It'll show all of your removable drives here, so just make sure you have the correct one selected before we do anything. Also, on top of this, check your drive to make sure you have nothing important on it, as we will be wiping it completely. So, my E drive here has a bunch of files on it, none of these are worth anything to me, so I'll delete them as such. Making sure it's completely empty, which it is, we'll go ahead and flash it. So, all we need to do is click install, and yes, yes once more, and now we've confirmed that this drive will be formatted and Ventoy will be written onto it. Depending on the speed of your drive, I definitely recommend at least USB 3, it could take a short minute or two. When it's done, your USB drive will be redetected, and clicking through this, you'll see the version of the device you currently have, and of course in the future, if you choose to update Ventoy, just open up the program, plug in the drive, and you'll be able to update it as well. Anyways, now that we've done this, we can close and delete this temporary folder, as well as the zip that we downloaded. Now, opening up your Explorer once more, you'll see your USB drive is now called Ventoy, and it's a tiny bit smaller. Inside of this should be nothing except for maybe a hidden folder. In here is where we'll be dropping any ISOs you want to boot to. Now, most likely you'll only see one drive, the same as before, this is your USB, but if I open up disk management and check my USB, you'll see that there's actually two different partitions, a main one where we can put all of our ISOs and a second one that's used to boot a hidden EFI partition. In some cases, this other one will be visible to your PC and you can see other files. Plugging in your USB may show you two different folders, although it might not. Anyways, the bigger USB drive when you plug it in is the one where you'll be dropping all of your different files. For example, if I plug in a different one, you can see here that I have Ventoy with a bunch of stuff on it, as well as another hidden USB drive that has all of these different boot files on it. If you see this, you can just ignore this one. The main one that we're going to be focusing on is the bigger partition. Anyways, now that you've had a sneak peek of how it works, we'll go ahead and open our brand new Ventoy drive, and in here we can simply drop any ISOs you want to boot to. For example, in my downloads, I have a Windows 11 ISO that's around 6 gigs and a Linux Mint, which is around 2.8 gigs. Both of these are just normal ISO files. What we can do is drag them to our USB drive. Mine's a little bit too small to fit both, so I'll just be putting the Linux Mint one here. But of course, you've already seen that we can have hundreds of different files, Windows 10, 11, etc. While this ISO file copies, I'll show you what I have on mine. On mine, you can see that I have Linux that I installed and played around with. I originally dual booted Endeavor OS, but then switched to Arch. I have Hiren's Boot CD, which is filled with a bunch of different fantastic tools for rescuing files, drives, etc. Manjaro, another ISO for Linux, as well as Ubuntu, Windows 10, and Windows 11. These Windows 10 and 11 ISOs are super useful to have handy, especially if they're all up to date, as you can boot into them as rescue drives to run command prompt, rebuild, broken partitions and things like that, etc. Super useful to have around on top of any rescue type ISOs such as Hiron's Boot CD. You can see that I have a couple of other random files in here. These won't be picked up at all by the menu. You can copy whatever else you want on here, though I'd recommend keeping it inside of a folder, for example, just to keep things neat and tidy. So I'll say not boot stuff. 
and I'll put all of my extra files inside of them. There we go. Anyways, a little bit cleaner now. Now to boot to the USB drive. This is super simple. All you need to do is plug the USB into a system you want to boot into a Linux install, Windows, or whatever it is, and spam the F12, delete, or F2 key, whatever it is on your system, in order to enter the BIOS. Somewhere under the boot section, you should find a boot order. All you need to do is push the USB drive to the very front. And by doing so, you should be able to boot into Ventoy. Let's see what that looks like. And there we go, we've now booted to it. In order to move around in this, just use your arrow keys and you can choose any ISO or IMG file that you copied here. So I've got Memtest, Windows, Windows 11 installer, and Linux Mint, for example. If I hit enter for Linux Mint and choose boot normal mode, it'll start up as if I just burned that CPU USB and booted to it itself. So there you go, there's the Mint logo. And shortly after, you'll see our cursor appears and depending on the speed of your drive, a Linux Mint desktop, for example. Obviously, the resolution is completely off here, but you get the point. We're now running Linux Mint, and we could choose to install it as we would usually had we burned this to the USB as expected. Let's try something else. If I shut this down, then choose, say, I don't know, let's see, uh, Windows 11 installer, for example, boot in normal mode. You should see after a short while, bam, we have the usual Windows installer and we can click through this too. Had you put some rescue thing on here or something like that, you'd be able to go to that as well. So it's a super useful, very powerful tool. Now you can do something even cooler with this and that's booting onto ISO files and images that aren't actually on your USB. Say you plugged it into your PC, downloaded something into the downloads folder and forgot to write it to the USB, you can actually browse to it. So hit F2 to open up the browse section and you can use the arrow keys as well as enter to navigate into your other drive. So for example, my C drive here, where you'll find program files and everything like that. I'll head into users followed by my username, then downloads. And in here, you'll find a couple of ISOs that I haven't even copied to the USB just yet. If I fire into say, I don't know, the Windows 11 installer once more, boot in normal mode, whoopam, there we go. We've now booted into the Windows Explorer. And the best part is, is that we didn't even need to copy this to our USB in the first case. Obviously, if you're gonna be installing it to the same drive where you're currently booted to this ISO, it's not a good idea, but you can use it in the meanwhile if you want to just live CD something, say rescue files, etc. Super, super powerful. And that's it. If you have a ton of different ISOs, you can even hit F3 to go into a list view where you can navigate around through folders, for example. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this quick guide. This is a super, super powerful tool that I'd recommend pretty much everyone should have, especially if you're the family techie or something like that. It's super invaluable. Anyways, thank you all for watching and a special thank you to Superior Emerald for being an ultimate supporter. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.